Hello everyone, this is Ted Bowman speaking to you from Atlanta, Georgia. I want to talk a little bit today about uh, crypto assets and cryptocurrencies and why there's a difference between the two. Um, let's start with a prediction that I made on the January 1st uh, edition of Sovereign Investor Daily. I said that I thought that um, Bitcoin was going to uh, suffer a fairly significant loss uh, early in this year and that it would probably uh, remain at a lower level than the highs that it had reached in December, around $20,000 a Bitcoin. Well, I was spot on. Uh, Bitcoin lost 48% of its market cap uh, in the last uh, week or so and is now bouncing around $10,000 a coin. Um, that's a pretty significant drop and uh, I think it's uh, indicative of my general approach to um, this whole space, which is to stop thinking about these things as currencies and start thinking about them as crypto tokens that lead way to crypto assets. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, remember that um, an asset is something that delivers either a usable service or a, uh, a long-term stream of revenue or income. So if you hold stocks, uh, you have assets because those stocks will produce money for you going down the road. Uh, and the price of stocks is set by uh, people's expectations of what those future earnings are going to be. So that's why we pay attention to things like price earnings ratios and so on. When it comes to currencies, on the other hand, all we can do is price them. Um, basically, currencies are designed to be used uh, to facilitate uh, exchange, uh, to hold value, and to um, act as a unit of account. Now, the problem with something like Bitcoin is that it doesn't do any of those things. It was designed to do them, but it can't really do them for a number of reasons. One is that it's uh, too volatile. I mean, why would you want to spend a Bitcoin today if tomorrow its price might go up by 20%? You lose money. The other problem is that it takes a long time for a Bitcoin transaction to go through, and that's by design because of the way that the software is designed. Uh, so basically, Bitcoin is not functioning as a currency. It was designed specifically to be a currency, but it is not functioning as a currency. So all we're seeing with Bitcoin is basically um, a price. We're seeing uh, prices being set by uh, people who expect the price to go up when the price goes up, and we see uh, prices uh, going down when people expect the prices to go down. That is the dictionary definition of a speculative uh, play. So I see Bitcoin as a purely speculative play. Now, that doesn't mean that I see all cryptocurrencies as speculative plays. It's just that I stop seeing them as currencies and I see them as something else, and that reveals their value. To see what I mean, let's look at uh, something like the New York subway. To get into the New York subway, you need to have a token. You buy a token or a set of tokens uh, at a machine, and then you uh, stick those tokens into the turnstile you get in and you can uh, use the subway. You can go from any place to any place on that subway system for a token. Now, um, cryptocurrencies, the things that we think of as cryptocurrencies like Ether, for example, are basically not currencies so much as they are tokens. Um, they do exactly the same thing. Um, the price of Ether is basically set based on how much people um, would like to use the future uh, uh, returns or the future benefits of the underlying platform that uh, Ether is built on, which is called Ethereum. Now, the idea is that you use Ether tokens to purchase things like cloud storage or uh, um, contract tracking services or life insurance tracking services, all kinds of different things that currently uh, require centralized record keeping could now be done uh, using Ether as a, or rather Ethereum, as the underlying uh, blockchain technology to deliver those services. The point is that Ether can only really be used to buy those services, right? And so the price of uh, Ether reflects uh, primarily people's estimation of how valuable those services are going to be in the future. You can't go out and, and use Ether to buy a hamburger, you can't use it to fill your uh, gas tank and so on, but it's not designed to do that like Bitcoin was. Bitcoin was designed to be able to do that, but it's failing. Ether was designed to provide uh, access to a particular platform. Now, that doesn't mean that Ether's price is only set by people's expectations of the value of that platform. People are buying and selling Ether uh, because uh, the price of uh, Ether moves. So, in the short term, people are buying and selling uh, Ether as a crypto token uh, and setting its price uh, based on their estimation of where that price is going in the short term. In the long term, however, the value of Ether or any crypto token like it will ultimately revert to a long-term value that reflects the underlying performance 
of the platform that it's built on and how valuable think, uh, people think those services are going to be. That's a very different proposition from cryptocurrency. And so in 2018, my advice to you would be stop using the term cryptocurrency. Start using terms like crypto tokens and crypto assets, because that's really what we're talking about when it comes to investment value. Investing in Bitcoin is uh, not an investment play. It's purely speculative. Investing in something like Ether or one of the other strong um, uh, tokens, crypto tokens that have uh, a relationship to a strong platform that is being rapidly adopted by many different users, that's where the money's going to be. It's the same way it would be in the stock market. So for 2018, throw out the term cryptocurrency, bring in the term crypto token. Ted Bowman, I'll talk to you again soon.